The original Apple trackpad was released in 2010. Until recently, I've been using the Apple trackpad for over a decade, on and off, and it still works. I upgraded to the newest Apple trackpad in black. The question is, is it better? In this video, I discuss the updates to the third generation Apple trackpad and how it compares to the original Apple trackpad. Thank you to everyone that has hit that subscribe button. And if this is your first time on my channel, welcome to the Elevate Project. So let's get into it. This is the original Apple Magic trackpad. The original only came in one color, silver aluminum. It's a multi-touch trackpad that simulates Apple's multi-touch trackpad on the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro of its time. It uses two AA batteries to power and connect through Bluetooth 2.0. The trackpad has a nice angle which matches the original Magic Keyboard, making it comfortable to use and giving you the same actions you might be used to with a MacBook which can make things much easier in certain situations, like zooming and swiping compared to a traditional mouse. When I first got the original trackpad, I completely replaced my mouse and turned my MacBook into a desktop when I worked at home. Since that time, I used the original trackpad on and off over the years. Recently, in the past year, I went back to my trusty Apple Magic trackpad, not to replace my mouse, but instead, I use it alongside my Magic MX Master 3 when editing my YouTube videos and when multitasking from Office documents working on different projects. In addition, the Apple trackpad solved my biggest issue with universal control. If you stay till the end, I will tell you how the Apple Magic Trackpad and the third gen have made universal control even better if you're using universal control with a mouse like the Logitech MX Master 3. So now this is the newest Magic Trackpad, the third generation, which comes in different colors. And I'm happy to get the black version to match the rest of my peripherals. The Magic Trackpad is larger, rechargeable, and comes with a braided lightning cable. Like the original, the Magic Trackpad has a nice angle, multi-touch with force touch that was also debuted with the second gen. It is a full edge-to-edge -edge glass service with no wasted space. Comparing the performance and my usage with both of them, the newest Magic Trackpad is more responsive and the force touch is a great simulation of that fake click. The larger surface does make it much more comfortable and more confident with each swipe and multi-touch gesture. The rechargeable battery seems to be the norm with most peripherals and in comparison makes a big difference for me. This brings me to why I purchased and upgraded to the new Magic Trackpad. Comparing the two, the original trackpad does the job that's needed. And depending on your workflow, if you have the original trackpad and is working well, I would say not to upgrade. I love using the multi gestures when using my MacBook Pro or Air before I had my Mac Mini M1. I've grown accustomed to that force touch. When I started using my original Apple trackpad more often, I started to go through batteries so fast because I was using it a lot more for editing and with updates to universal control, the Apple trackpad has become even more useful. That being said, if you are accustomed to the MacBook Air or MacBook Pro trackpad and want the same functionality in desktop mode, the Magic trackpad is worth it. I love the Magic Trackpad and the gestures. I use it side by side with my mouse to get the most out of everything I do to stay as productive as possible. Bonus, the size of the newest Magic Trackpad is so comfortable and feels freer and in control of each gesture. Now, if you're finding value so far, hit the like button so I know you like content like this one. I mentioned in the beginning, if you stay to the end, I would share why the Apple trackpad has made universal control more useful. I shared my experience of universal control and will link the video in the description. One of the main issues I had was having all the abilities of my mouse when I move from my Mac mini and cross over to another Mac or to my iPad. For example, it was difficult to get to the home page when in an app without touching the screen or using a shortcut key. I lost my special functions on my Logitech mouse, which makes sense as I defined them for my Mac Mini M1 and not my iPad. The worst is even just scrolling through my emails, the scroll wheel on my mouse doesn't work when I move from my Mac Mini M1 to my iPad. 
Then I connected my Apple Magic trackpad and wow, what a difference. All the multi-touch gestures work amazing and I literally don't have to touch my iPad. I can place it wherever I want and use it as a second display just with iOS and it's easy to get to the apps I use the most. So was the upgrade worth it? Well, the rechargeable battery alone was worth it as I was going through six to eight AA batteries every month. The bigger surface area and force touch on top of that make it a no brainer. If you have the original trackpad and don't go through batteries so quickly, I probably wouldn't upgrade for performance. More so for aesthetics at that point. Hey, not a bad thing. I still use my original Apple trackpad for an older Mac mini that my kids will use from time to time. So if you found value in this video, you know what to do. If you're interested in some other home office upgrade videos, go ahead and click here or check out the links in the description below or click here to watch one of my newest videos. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.